What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the In Situ Health and Fitness Podcast. On today's episode, we are wrapping up the month with interesting facts, teachable moments, and fun things that we think will help you live a long, healthy, and happy life. Last month has been a good month. We had a few good podcasts in there. You asking me or are you telling me? Both. <laughs> uh, last week we dropped the nine habits to being a, becoming a high performer. Mm-hmm. Great episode. Make sure you go back to listen to that one. And I did a interview with Jessica. A great interview. I've been getting a lot of feedback, a lot of questions uh, for next time Jessica's on. So, oh, really? Yeah, good to see that people are listening, interacting. Um, I had about eight topics that I wanted to dive in with Jessica after the podcast. Yeah, of course. It was, it was just more like a broad overview of her journey, which was actually amazing and quite good to hear. Um, so, yeah, I just, there's about, like I said, eight different topics we could just dive into, just do a whole podcast on one of those topics. Mm. Uh, everything from training to relationships to how you actually prep for a bodybuilding show and... It's, it's just crazy the level of dedication to food and training and that end goal where most people can't even get close to that. So it's very interesting. Yeah, I feel like most people can't even just stay in regular shape, let alone in that like super, um, what would you call it? High maintenance, super hard to achieve Mm. lean condition you know like it's hard enough for the general public just to be relatively healthy let alone maintain that physique for such a long period of time leading up to the competition yeah and i kind of wish everybody living alive now did some sort of prep for a bodybuilding show because they would know how much goes into it and it's so hard to get those results that a lot of people go well it's not actually worth doing it because a lot of people go into health and fitness thinking that they will just do it for a couple of months and then end up ripped and be able to walk into a bodybuilding show and get very disappointed when they don't see the results that you see on social media, bodybuilding shows, all that sort of stuff. So it's actually a good practice to do just to see how much work goes into it and how much dedication you need to do to get that Yeah. Um, because it is hard. And just on a side note, even Jessica said herself, it's not a healthy thing to do. That level of any sort of level of i don't know what like elite sport is yeah that what elite you're sport to? yeah it's not healthy for yeah. your body that's why like football players retire so young right because mm. they can't do it you can't you physically can't do it forever yeah you probably mentally as well there's some guys that do it into their 30s and girls but yeah it's very hard for their body to continue doing it so that's yeah all right anything else on the what's what content have you put out over the last couple of weeks that's been w- noteworthy? I feel like I've done nothing. <laughs> Aside from the guide that I made to go along with the nine strategies mm. to be a high performer, which that's is still free. It is still free. It will always be free. Um, it's designed to get you guys on the mailing list. So it will always be free. I think it's the best. Um, it's my favorite at the minute. It's my favorite guide that we have out because... I don't know. It's just like so useful, but it's also not as boring and obvious maybe as other like how to count your macros and portion guides, etc. But if you do all of the nine things in the guide, then like you, it's not like it's directed for you to lose weight or be in shape. But if you do all of those nine things, just as a consequence, you will be. So I mm. feel like that it's kind of more fun for yeah. lack of a better word in that way. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's, the best thing that I have added to the website the last month. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing. Cool. Um, Why are you looking at me like I've forgotten something? No, no. Two Minute Tuesdays have been good. Oh, yes. I love it when you guys reply to the Two Minute Tuesday emails being like, this helped me or I didn't think about this before or I think that you forgot to add this in because it gives me so many ideas for future two minute Tuesday emails. And I feel like everyone reads them because they're like short. Mm. They're like designed to be read in two minutes, right? Hence the name. Um, and I try to make them so short. So you learn something and you can immediately implement something into your life to be healthier or whatever. Like that is the concept behind them. So I feel like people 
when people value stuff, they actually reply to us, which is so nice. Rather than me just word vomiting information that may or may not be immediately useful into the <laughs> World Wide Web because there's already so much of that. Yeah. Um, and you can reply to those emails. A lot of people are hesitant to reply to those emails because they think it's just a computer on the other end. But if you do reply to hit reply and send us a message, we get that. So we are on the other end of that. Yeah. Um, we're obviously not big enough that we have other people and com- AI and all that sort of stuff working for us on the back end. We are the back end. So whenever you reply to a story, a message, email, all that sort of stuff, we are the ones on the other end. So never hesitate to do that. I love to chat. I love to chat. All right. Normally Mac has a quote to kick this show off, but I have a quote today. Okay. I think you're going to know exactly where I got it from <laughs> as soon as I say it. And... I know sometimes when I say these sort of quotes, a few people listening think I'm talking to them, but this is actually a reminder for me. Um, This quote, I heard it and it resonated with me and my goals and the work I put into it. So the quote is, stop complaining about the results you didn't get from the work you didn't do. Alex Hamozzi and Chris Williamson in the Modern Wisdom podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Great podcast. Such a good podcast. If we've been, I think we've talked, spoken about that on the last two shows. Probably. Um, but yeah, Alex Mosey's quote. So again, stop complaining about the results you didn't get from the work you didn't do. And I feel like that, for me, when they said that, I was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, fair point. Because there's just a lot of things I'm trying to achieve at the moment. Um, too many things at once right? too many things at once and i'm not putting in the work to those things so i'm not getting the results that i wanted and sometimes i sit there like oh, i'm just not getting results from this and it's like well i'm not even putting any work into it so can you give give everyone a specific example because i feel like people love when we give life examples um like to- just pick one thing that you're not satisfied with so time management okay so i've got a lot going on at the moment um, I've got leads coming in, clients, all that sort of stuff, and I'm just not managing to communicate with them well enough because I'm not managing my time properly, and I'm just, I'm not actually spending any time man- managing my time. So I'm not time blocking. I'm not doing anything, and it's like I'm getting frustrated that I can't do more. But it's like I can't do more because I'm not even putting in the work. So what results am I ac- actually expecting? Um, Training's gotten a lot better. So I was getting very frustrated with training and the results I was getting from training. Um, It's just, again, I wasn't being consistent. Uh, I wasn't, you know, if training goals are my, if I want goals from training, I've got to train Mm -hmm. and I've got to eat the right food. Last couple of weeks, we've cut out a lot of snacking, a lot of little bits and pieces out of the diet, which, you know, at the time, we, I always tell myself, oh, it's only a couple of Digestives, let's be honest, it's digestives, yeah, guys. it's only a couple of digestives, but a couple of digestives over the week adds up to a 1,000 calories. Yeah. So it's an extra 1,000 calories a week I was eating in just digestives or what insert whatever I was eating. So cutting that out's made a huge difference in my physique and look. Um, so, yeah, I've just, you know, been putting in the work and getting better results. So everybody out there, what results do you want and are you actually putting in the work to get it? Because I feel like as coaches, we sometimes get clients who complain about the results they're getting and it's like, well, what did you do last week? And they didn't do any food prep. They didn't eat the meals they were meant to. They missed a couple of training days and it's like, well, like we we can only do so much. Mm -hmm. So... So one thing that I actually took from this podcast and implemented immediately with coaching clients was instead of asking people like, cause I do check-ins like once a month with most clients and other clients I have, like I message every single day. Um, and I usually ask like, how was your week or how did you go since the last time we spoke? Just cause I try to ask open ended questions for clients just to word vomit at me. Cause that's ideal. But um, Alex Mosey was like, try asking how many days in the last month did you stick to your meal plan or how many days in the last month did you actually go to the gym rather than just saying, 
how was your last month? Because mm. like to have an actual tally of how many days out of 30 or 31 you went can be very confronting. So I do get a lot of clients to keep habit trackers weekly. And then at the end of the week, say you have one habit for seven days, I'll do a tally at the end of the habit tracker for them being like, you got four out of seven last week. What can we do the coming week for you to get six out of seven? You know what I mean? So I feel like having an actual metric to reflect on shows you, are you actually doing the work to get the result that you want? or not Mm. i see this at uni all the time as well with the same thing people because it's like there's a lot of assignments due at this point in the semester and i am very much one usually to sort of plan milestones for where i want to be in my assessments leading up to the assessment and i always submit it a week earlier but so many kids kids they are kids i'm so old there (laughs) so many kids are like um oh my God, I need an extension or the essay is too hard or it's too many words or the instructions aren't clear or I can't find enough references or whatever the excuse is because I haven't done any of the work. Mm. And it goes same with exams. Like my mum's always like to me, oh, are you nervous for your exam? And I'm like, no, because I've done the work leading up to the exam. If I could do more until this point, I would have done more, mm. you know? And I just feel like just having that, it's such a small shift but it makes like mental shift, but it makes a humongous difference in like your stress levels and your ability to manage work and health and fitness and assignments, whatever it is that Mm. you're trying to manage, right? Because I don't know. Yeah. And it sort of goes the other way. Like you might have goals and I say, have you done the work towards those goals? And you say, no, then you might not actually want those goals and that's okay. Whose goals are they? Yeah. You've got to decide on if those goals are actually important to you to dedicate time and effort and do the work to reach those goals. And if it's if you don't, it, that's okay. It's mm. just you might not be aligned with the right goals that you're actually thinking of. Yeah. So take time and think about that as well. So one more time, stop complaining about the results you didn't get from the work you didn't do. All right, changing directions here a little. If I said, let's go to, a, to the stretch lab, what would you think of (laughs) a yoga studio yeah okay i just immediately thought of like um, a yoga a a mat on the floor for some reason yeah so this come across my uh instagram advertising feed in there somewhere yeah and i sort of scrolled past and i was like oh hold on a second went back and it's the stretch lab is the name of the place and you go there to stretch so it's PNF stretching, so partner stretching. So oh. there's just it looked like it was just a room full of beds, like raised beds, and then like you mean Pilates beds? No, no, it's like kind of weird massage beds. More like massage beds, okay. like that height. Yeah, and yeah, you just got somebody. I guess it's similar to a massage. I'm assuming you'd get a massage with it, but in the advertising, it was just people stretching other people out. So it's like the masseuse was stretching people. And this is the stretch what? lab, which like you can do partner stretching all the time. Like yeah. we've done it a couple of times and you, you can do certain ones and, you know, you can get more out of stretches when you've got somebody actually forcing your leg into certain positions or your shoulder and you get more out of that stretch. But it's just crazy now that there's actual places that are for stretching. Why? Would you ever use that or would you ever recommend anyone use that? Is stretching that useful? I mean... For some people, yeah. Like, I don't know. I didn't go into cost and all that sort of stuff. But say you've got a lunch break and you've been sitting at the desk all day. Mm, true. Going and getting stretched. It sounds so weird. <laughs> it sounds so weird. But going and getting stretched for 15 minutes is actually probably very beneficial if you're sitting at the desk all day. Wouldn't going for a walk be better? It's free as well. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Both, like, both is good. Yeah. Neither is bad. But... It's just, I guess, another option. Um, yeah, it looked very like bougie and nice inside, mm. obviously. Very moody, I guess you could say, inside the stretch lab. Um, I don't know exactly where it was, somewhere in Melbourne. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was... I'm like, oh yeah, I guess... I, Everyone's always banging on about how you have to pick a niche, right? Yeah, and that's very niche down. Um, obviously, yeah, you would feel good afterwards. You always feel good after a good stretch, so... There's that as well. I don't know. Yeah, interesting. I feel like I wouldn't, you know. Mm. But 
also at the same time, there's this weird like thing, this mi- weird mindset that people think being flexible means health, <laughs> means like healthy joints and mm. like a, a good amount of flexibility is good. Like you don't want to be completely inflexible. But for some reason, I think people feel like being flexible is more important than, say, lifting weights. Yeah. Like people would start trying to work on their flexibility before they would ever step foot into a gym, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you should have strength before flexibility. Yeah. Because you want strength in those ranges. So, yeah, look, flexibility is a good measure of health and longevity, but only one measurement. Like Um, who is their target market? I don't know. I'm assuming... You. (laughs) Well, no, like busy professionals that sit at a desk all day because they haven't got time to stretch so they go in and pay somebody to stretch them (laughs) (laughs) um yeah like for example you should be able to touch your toes yeah that's a good measure of flexibility but you should also be able to pick something off up off the ground without breaking your back yeah or hurting your back in that same position so if you can bend down touch your toes and then exactly how you just done that pick some sort of weight off the ground as well that is good overall strength and flexibility, not just flexibility. Yeah. Um, all right. Next two are training. And okay. they actually come from, both of these come from you. Me? The comments you made. Oh, here we go. Um, let's start with heavy weights does not equal more size. God. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> One more time. Stop what you're doing. Turn this up a little bit. Heavy weights does not equal more size. Um, Again, I think this comes from just the whole bodybuilding side of things. And unfortunately, people put too much focus on actual training and the training gets them results where, yes, you do need a good program to build muscle or all that sort of stuff, but it's what you eat and what you do outside the training that actually gives you the size. So you need to eat so much food to gain muscle mm. and get bulky and or big muscles or whatever you want to call it. Um, even just to get lean, you need to be eating a lot of food just so your muscles can grow just that little bit so you can have that lean looking body. Yes. This, yeah. <laughs> um, the reason I said this, I feel like I've been repeating this a lot the last two weeks right even Mm. since we did the wrap up because guys and girls have been saying this all over all yeah i don't want to lift weights because i don't want to get bulky everyone's like when we describe what our business is and what we do for work or like that we go to the gym a lot the first response is like oh i would go to the gym but i don't want to be bulky Mm. and i i want to say do i look bulky to you because i don't think that i'm bulky um do you no Right, so I'm I'm often in the gym, and people, we, girls, will if I'm friends with them, like friendly enough, saying hi or stuff. They're like, "Wow, you're so strong! Didn't think you'd be so strong because you're so small, or like you're so slim, but you can lift heavy weights." Mm. That makes no sense to me, you know. Like I get so many comments like that because people just assume that if you lift heavy weights, and you're going to look huge like the hulk you know what i mean um but it's definitely not the case like i wish that i was bulkier but it is so hard to put on muscle like even the amount of muscle i have i'm hungry all of the time because it costs my body a decent amount of energy to have the amount of muscle that i have right and i want to keep progressing my weights and build muscle strength and whatever but goddamn, have to eat so much food. Mm. Um, and that's another thing. People often assume that when you are lean or quote unquote healthy, that you don't eat much. Yeah. Like people, especially my family, like I've said this before, but people are always surprised at how much food I eat for how small I am. And it's just because I have muscle. Like mm. my body just uses the food that I eat because I have muscle. I don't know. It's a win-win situation, I think. Yeah. Two sort of examples come up about this. Remember in Bansdale when we were training at the council pool gym? Oh, the bark. The bark. And um, there's this, there was this tiny little, like not tiny, but very thin. Very, he's probably probably about your height, but you know. 167 he, he centimeters He was muscly, but he was thin. Mm-hmm. And he loaded up this barbell for a back squat 
with two blues each side, so 100 kilos. And I was doing bench behind him or across the room. And I sort of sat up from the bench thinking, oh my God, what's this kid doing? He's going to crush himself. I'm going to have to go over and save him. <laughs> so I was sitting on the edge of the bench ready. He unracked it, walked back and just smashed out the reps. And I, like, I was blown away. And it, it's at that point where you're like, well, more weight doesn't equal more muscle because yeah. this kid was pumping out reps at 100 kilos and he had no mu- like he had no muscle like yeah. considering like a bodybuilder or something like that but I don't think a bodybuilder his height could squat that much yeah there's because like size doesn't equal strength either right mm. and strength doesn't equal size like there's sometimes there's guys that come in that train in the gym in our building and they look like big you know mm. like they're swole like they're puffy but I can deadlift more than them and I can bicep curl more than them just i don't know because they do lots of light weight high reps is that how you yeah. get and look genetics might play in that as well like as they might just build wise, muscle but not strength yeah um and you don't know what people are doing behind closed doors i was actually having this conversation with another coach in the gym the other day about testosterone mm. and or inserts you know, any peptides that you can get now on the market or GH, whatever it is. Because like I've got everything pretty much dialed in now. The only thing I could do is sleep a little bit more and I struggle to build muscle. But I, I, it's very hard for me to build muscle. And I was actually saying this to Xavier, the other coach. I'm like, it sucks because I'm doing everything right. I'm doing it all natural and I just can't put on any muscle. But then you look at photos of these other guys and they're fucking huge and you're like well, and all i have to do is look at the dumbbells <laughs> yeah and and i was i brought up this study it's quite actually quite a famous study and what most people refer back to when it comes to testosterone and so there was a couple of different groups say one group had testosterone and everybody like it, throughout this whole study everybody's doing the same weight training program So one group had testosterone at a high level, low level. One group had no testosterone. One group had no testosterone but got told that they were having Mm. testosterone. And one group had testosterone but wasn't training. The group that was had testosterone but didn't train gained more muscle than the guys that were training without testosterone. So, Crazy. So you can just sit around and build muscle with testosterone. Yeah. So most guys can build muscle without lifting weights, just going through their day-to-day life and just having testosterone and they'll build muscle compared to somebody that's doing naturally mm. in the gym. Um, even the guys that got told that they were taking testosterone but actually weren't, it was a placebo, they put on more muscle than the guys that weren't having testosterone so So even just the thought of having more testosterone gives you more muscle can i just buy a supplement and put a fake sticker on it and give it to you and be like here's some test you have to inject it right yeah most of the time yeah yeah Yeah, um there's other ways you can apply it but anyway but that just brings up my whole point of like i think it just we see so many muscly people on social media and in front of us lifting weights and we think oh shit lift weights equals heavyweights equals you know big muscles and it's not it's probably more like testosterone equals big muscles yeah for guys and girls yeah um i I dare say there's a lot of girls out there dabbling in certain peptides and that sort of stuff as well um and look i'm not saying it's bad you do you do you and you do what you like but um it just sucks that everybody else gets a skewed vision of what actually happens to your body when you lift heavy weights yeah like you should be strong you should be able to move heavy weights in every single direction and that is not going to make you bigger. It's just going to make you healthier and more resistant to injuries and live longer. And get up off the ground when you're an old lady. Like I can't emphasize how important that is, right? Mm. Um, before we move on, I just want to like get, remind everyone maybe like you brought up social media and how er- when you go on social media, you see everyone is – depending on what your feed gives you these days but most like you see people that are in shape they're either extremely skinny or they're extremely ripped and i feel like sometimes because i usually walk the dog super early in the morning so i don't see that many people and then there's some days where i am just like in the apartment or just upstairs and i don't see anyone outside of the building but i'll be on social media a lot and see lots of people that are in really good shape and then 
I feel like I'm not in good enough shape to you're laughing at me because I said like this is a problem with me isn't it Mm. because I feel like I'm not in shape enough to wear certain clothes that I want to wear you know what I mean so but then I go out and I go for a walk like in the middle of the day and I see everyone is just regular shape or I do see a lot of people are overweight and it's just like wow not everyone in the world is completely shredded Mm. or extremely skinny it's just my social media feed and it's completely skewing my perception. But I feel like a lot of people don't recognize the That's difference. Skewed. Yeah. Mm. Like between actually being out in the real world and what you're looking at, because you're probably looking at the people on your phone more than you are looking at the people you're walking past, to be honest. Mm. Just, yeah, something to remember. Uh, all right. So a helpful hint to finish off the show. Um feel like giving you guys something to finish on that you can take away this is more for people that are trying to be in a calorie deficit and training um, because training does make you hungry so work out later in the day so your hunger is later in the day (laughs) i thought you hated this comment when i told it to you only because i like training in the morning oh and i've always liked training in the afternoon Mm. and i think maybe maybe subconsciously it's because i get so hungry afterwards Mm. So, like, just I I follow this lady, uh, Hattie Boyle is her name on Instagram, and she is a bodybuilder, hardcore. Like, she competes, she's competed for years, and she's older, maybe in her early 30s. So, it's even more impressive, right? Because as you get older, it's a lot harder. And one of the tricks that she shared was because she's on, like, a, a big cut right now, so she has to do a certain amount of cardio to help keep her body fat percentage down like light what's it called zone two cardio and she said the the most useful thing that i've found when trying to eat in a calorie deficit and get ten thousand steps and lift weights every day is saving both weightlifting and cardio for the afternoon even she does her light her zone two cardio in the evening because then she can just like eat small amounts of food all morning and feel fine appetite wise. But as soon as she lifts some weights and as soon as she goes for a walk, her metabolism is like, "Ah!" like I'm starving. Right. So then if you push your training back into the afternoon, you only have a couple of hours where you could potentially overeat Mm. a couple of hours where you have to like, um, use more self-discipline rather than if you train at 6am, God help you because how many hours are there between you training and going to bed and you trying to eat in a calorie deficit and your body's screaming at you for food. And I don't think people put those together. Yeah. People just start eating. So people will go um, in the morning, do a massive hit session or CrossFit F45, which gets them super sweaty, uses a shitload of energy and then overconsume for the rest of the day and they don't get any results. And they're like, what's going on? I'm training so hard. But you don't actually realize that your body will manipulate your your energy output to do that. So you're not actually burning more calories or giving yourself any extra gains by doing those harder workouts in the morning or your zone two because your body's smarter than that. Um, you're just going to, yeah, speed up your metas- metabolism and just want to eat more food. And you probably don't even realize it because yeah. you'll be snacking on your nuts, which are high in calories you probably might even go get to three o'clock and oh shit, I need a chocolate or a soft drink or something like that. And so, yeah, I think a lot of people just don't realize what they're doing and put those two together. Yeah, definitely. Train, see, training in the afternoon is the best. (laughs) I I rate it. (laughs) Yeah, it's look. Yeah, I think, I think that's just a really good hack for people and just good to bring up. So people go, oh yeah, that, does happen to me like exercise does make me hungry (laughs) yeah and it should it really should yeah so that's not a bad thing and you shouldn't starve yourself thinking that oh well i'm going to starve myself to get better results it's just like you just need a little bit of a calorie deficit if you're trying to lose some body fat and just yeah maybe train in the afternoons cool anything else you want to add to the wrap up no that's it cool all right thanks everybody obviously if you've made it this far then you have enjoyed the show so make sure you copy this link for the show and send it to one friend or family member or not even a friend just send it some random person (laughs) Uh, because the more you do that the more listeners we get so the more shows we can put out the better content we can put out and the more interactions we can have with more different people so we can get better stories 
better real, real life examples for you guys. All right, I'll just leave it there. See you all in the next episode. Bye.